Five equations of motion. So having der derived the five equations of motion in the last video, in this video I'm going to use them to solve problems, just really generic problems, and we'll just get practice solving them and using them in, in different situations. Car accelerates from rest to 50 kilometers an hour in 3.2 seconds. Determine the distance traveled by the car. So uh, we're going to take that same sort of approach where we're going to write out what we know v1 of the car it says it starts from rest a trick to these questions is always going to be there's going to be lots of numbers that are obvious but we have to make sure we catch those numbers um, in the question that are those words in the question that mean numbers in this case we're looking for things like from rest to a stop an object was dropped we'll see examples of all of those as we go through here here we have the car accelerates from rest. So that tells us that the initial velocity is zero to 50 kilometers per hour. So that's V2. Again, just a quick reminder here, we can't use kilometers per hour when we're combining with, um, when we're combining with other stuff like acceleration. So we're gonna just change that right over to 13.9 meters per second before we even get going in three seconds. And it's asking for the displacement of the car. Uh, the equation that represents this relationship, delta D equals V1 plus V2 over 2 times time. Uh, with these equations, I, for this class, you'll be allowed to use a formula sheet. Probably most classes, you're allowed to use a formula sheet. But if you just do the practice with them, you'll find whether you try to or not, you will eventually inadvertently learn to just remember them. So 0 plus 13.9 divided by 2 times my time of 3 seconds. And here I just have calculator work. Works out to 20.8 meters. So a car going from 0 to 50 in 3.2 seconds will travel a distance of uh, 20.8 meters. A car can break with an acceleration of 4.2 meters per second squared. If you're traveling at 50 kilometers an hour, what is your minimum stopping distance? So again, we're looking for words here that mean uh, numbers. So here I say, what is your minimum stopping distance? That implies that you stop. So you have to make your V2 zero. Uh, V1 is 50 kilometers an hour, that's what you started with. And here we have an acceleration of 4.2 meters per second squared. Now we need to be careful. It says that you can break with an acceleration of 4.2 uh, meters per second squared. That implies that your acceleration and your current velocity are in the opposite direction of each other. So we have to make that um, acceleration 4.2 meters per second squared. If you don't, there'll be a negative hanging around in the equation. It's not that big of a deal because you'll probably realize it as you're going through. But just before you get started, we might as well get it right and recognize that it's negative 4.2. Uh, stopping distance, so I'm looking for a displacement here. And the equation for these guys is 2a delta d equals v2 squared minus v1 squared. A simple note about this equation, note the negative here is outside of anything that you substitute for this variable. So when you um, do your v1 squared, or your 13.9 squared, uh, it does not square away that negative sign. That negative sign is going to continue to exist. He's not squared, he's outside the brackets. It's not, you know, it's like this, it's like negative 5 squared is equal to negative 25, where negative 5 squared is equal to uh, 25. It's like this case here, where the negative sign is outside the brackets. Anyway, 
13.9 squared is 193.21, so that's negative 193.21, and 2 times negative 4.2 is negative 8.4, delta D, so delta D, well, just be really take my time here. This was in meters per second. This would be in meters squared per second squared. In this, um, just to, I'll just be a little more unit conscious and say it was two times negative four point two meters per second squared, which means it's. negative 8.4 meters per second squared. I haven't done any, there's no change to the math as I rewrote some of that stuff. I just forgot the units and I thought I should show that the units work out. So it would take you 23 meters to stop. Okay, one more. A train is accelerating at rest, accelerating at 0 0.8 meters per second squared as it reaches a crossing. It takes the train 25 seconds to pass the crossing. The train is 350 meters long. How fast was the train going when it first reached the crossing? <coughs> so, I have an acceleration of 0 0.8 meters per second squared. If the train is 350 meters long, then it's going to have to travel a distance of delta D, 350 meters, as it crosses that crossing. Um, the time here is 25 seconds, and V1 is what I'm missing. So, again, you can sneak a peek at your formula sheet, but we're looking here for delta D equals V1T plus one half a t squared. And there's some arrows. Okay, so that means 350 meters equals v1. That's what I don't know. Times 25 seconds plus one half 0 0.8 squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at that very last term and just collapse it down to just one value so it's a little easier to work with. So that all is equal to 250. And uh, see, I'm getting lazy with my units again. This is in meters per second squared. And this is in seconds that will become squared. And so what I'm left with here is meters. 350 minus 250 is just going to be 100 meters. V1 times 25 seconds. So if I divide both sides by 25 seconds, then my V1 is equal to 4 meters per second. And that's that. So that's how we use the five equations of motion to solve uh, for unknown variables when we have the trick if you notice in all these questions is we have to have three and we can always find the others if we have three. All right? See there's three things we know. Here's three thing three things we know. Here's three things we know. Right? So we always have to have three things and then we can find the fourth. And the easy way to choose the equation, for example, here is you can see that I need the equation that doesn't have acceleration. I can I need the equation that doesn't have time. I need the equation that doesn't have V2. By focusing actually on what's not there, you can choose the equation that's missing the same thing, and that's nice and easy. Well, obviously you're lining up with what you have as well.